Real estate has always been known to be the most lucrative way to make money. But how do people do so? There are mainly three ways to do it. By capital appreciation, rental income, and investment in real estate investment trusts, also known as REITs. In today's video, we will be diving into capital appreciation and rental income as well as its differences. Hi, this is Eric from Propedia and let's start off with capital appreciation. Capital appreciation or capital growth occurs when the value of the property increases above its purchase price over a period. Let us use the example of Interlace. In 2010, the PSF was at 1087 but in 2020, the PSF increased to 1231 This also means that there was an appreciation of $144 PSF over the 10 years period. Now, you must be thinking, what causes the property prices to increase? In Singapore, the main driving force would be the increasing land prices and demand. You can think about it in this way. If your neighbouring land parcel is currently being sold at a higher price than yours, buyer will be more likely to pay a higher price for your land at this point. Also, if there is a high demand in the area, which can be caused by many reasons such as distance to schools and amenities, buyer will pay more to beat the competition. Next, let's look at the rental income. This is the amount being collected from a tenant who uses your space when you rent out your property. The rental yield is calculated by taking an annual rental amount as a percentage of the property. This means that if you have purchased a property for $1 million and is able to rent out at $5,000 a month, your rental yield will be at 6%. Of course, having a higher rental yield is better as it means that you have a higher return on investment and it can help buyers like yourself repay the mortgage. In Singapore, rental rates are normally determined based on the market rental of the area and slight variation to the prices are made depending on factors such as the property prices, furniture, facilities and condition of the unit. The prices are usually relatively stable unless there is an economical downturn. Now for the question you have been wondering, is capital appreciation or rental yield more important when purchasing a property for investment? The answer to this question is usually dependent on what kind of investor you are. If you prefer a shorter term of around 3 to 5 years, you should lean more towards capital appreciation. While if you plan on holding your property for long term, you should put more emphasis on the rental yield. To illustrate this, let us use a case study. Short term investors will benefit more in Project A as the $200,000 difference will take more than 8 years to achieve using its $2,000 rental per month. And meanwhile, for Project B, it will achieve $384,000 in rental in 8 years. Hence, long-term investors will benefit more from Project B as the rental yield will outweigh the potential capital appreciation. However, this does not mean that you must choose one or the other. While analysing a project, it is important to look at both. In general, some things to look out for when spotting an investment property is firstly, good entry price, meaning that the property is being sold at a price that is lower than its current or market value. And secondly, long-term value such as the transportation or amenities that can raise property value in the future. If your property fits these two criteria, it will have a good potential for both capital appreciation and rental yield. And that's all for today's video. If you are still unsure about capital appreciation versus rental yield, feel free to contact me. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you guys soon.